Okay friends, to get started on our job, one of the first things we have to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After that, remove all of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Now that the wheel's off, we have a nice clear view of our braking unit. We're going to remove this caliper slider bolt here and then this one right down here. Leave that one in a couple threads, do the same to the other one. Now the next thing that I'm going to want to do is go ahead and push back the caliper pistons that are in here. You're going to have two of them. There's one right here and then there's one located over here. To do that, I'm going to come right inside this area here and just apply a little bit of pressure. This is going to help push in the caliper piston. With that off there, inspect this area here. If you see any fluid, you know you need a caliper. So now with that caliper off of there, I'm just going to go ahead and try to grab one of these pads. We're just going to continue on and knocking them out of there. Do the same to the other side. Now it's time to take off our caliper bracket bolts. Leave that one in a little bit. Remove your bracket. Now we're going to remove the rotor from this. We can pretty much bang anywhere on this because we're going to be replacing the rotor. I'm just going to come from the back side, give it a couple loving bonks, and drive it away. Obviously, you want to have a lug nut on here. That's going to make sure that it doesn't fall off. Now with the rotor off of here, the next thing you want to do is clean down your mating surface. You want to make sure that this is nice and smooth, that way there when we put our rotor on, there won't be anything in between that could cause a discrepancy. Before we can install our brand new rotor on the truck, of course you want to clean down the braking surfaces. Get the back side too. Let's apply some copper never seize along the hub mating surface. To help prevent your rotor from moving around, just go ahead and start on one of your lug nuts just to hold the rotor still. So now we need to start cleaning up our caliper bracket. Obviously, there should be some tins on it. Go ahead and remove all the tins that are remaining. After that, the next thing you want to do is clean down the areas where those tins were. We want to essentially get off all the crud that's in between the area where the bracket is and where the tin's going to ride. Once you have all four corners nice and clean, let's continue on to removing our caliper sliders. If you were to just grab onto this, give it a nice twist, you can slide it right out of the boot. Do the same for the other one. Set those down. Now with the sliders out of there, the next thing we want to do is clean down the ports that run inside of the brackets right here. So I'm just going to use some parts cleaner. A bore brush and I'll just work it in and out of there a bunch of times. Essentially, I just want to try to get out any crud that might be hiding out inside there. Oh yeah, that's nasty. We'll do that a couple more times and then we'll do the same to the other side. Now that I have both ports clean, the next thing I want to do is just go ahead and look at these boots. Just take a quick inspection of them. Make sure they're not torn or worn in any way. These both look like they're in very good condition, so I'm going to reuse them. The next thing I want to do is move along to cleaning the slider pins. Go ahead and wipe them down and inspect them. When you look at the shaft area, you want to make sure that it's not full of rust or any type of debris that's going to cause it to be restricted in its flow in and out inside the slider port. If it looks like it's damaged in any way, it's a good time to replace it. You also want to look up where my index finger is right here. There's a little bit of a lip there. That's where the boot's going to ride. You need to make sure that's cleaned out as well. If there's any debris in there, it's going to cause an area that water can make its way in, and of course you're going to have an issue. Now let's take some grease on our slider pin. Make sure you get the entire shaft of the slider pin, and then of course, make sure you get up into that ridge area right up there that I talked to you about as well. That's gonna be very important. Once you have it completely coated, go ahead and slide it into the port here, all the way down to the end, squeeze out any air that's inside there, and then give it a bunch of twists. That's gonna help work in the grease. Do the same to the other one. With both the sliders done, let's continue on to lubing the areas that we cleaned up on the bracket itself. With lubricant on all of our points, let's continue on to putting on our tins.
Now when you put these on, you want to make sure that you have the little tab facing away from where the rotor is going to be. The rotor will be in the center right here. So continue on putting all the tabs facing out. Now let's get our bracket on the truck. When you're putting on the bolts, use a little bit of red thread locker. We'll start in both of the bolts, snug them up, and then we'll torque them to 166 foot-pounds. Now we're going to continue on by pushing in the rest of our caliper pistons here. Typically when you do this, you want to make sure that you're pushing them both in at the same time. Let's apply some lubricant along our pistons here. And along all three ears. Now it's going to be time to start installing our brake pads. After you have your pads in there, we're going to continue on putting these on. You're going to notice they have a couple little tabs. Those tabs fit into each of these little holes. Do one up along the top here. Just be careful because the purpose of these is to spread the pads. So of course, once you let it go, they're going to want to kind of separate. Hold them together. Grab your caliper. We'll slide it right over the top of those. And that's going to hold the pads in. Now let's put in our caliper slider bolts. Once again, a little bit of red thread locker, couldn't hurt. Once they're started, snug them up, torque them to 42 foot-pounds. Now we're going to get the wheel on here, start on all of our lug nuts, get the wheel back on the ground, and then we'll torque the lug nuts to 165 foot-pounds. With the wheel on the ground, let's get to torquing it. Torqued. Okay friends, we got our brake job done. So now you have left to do is go ahead and jump inside the truck, pump up your brake pedal, come back out here, check your master cylinder. You want to make sure your brake fluid's full. After that, take it for a road test.